so here we have the next stop now we are just kind of north west of oxford street so we are getting into the more picturesque type of london now that everyone else around the world sees in like 101 dalmatians and all that lot um the buildings um are from about the 1900 and this is Marylebone, um, and it was named after St. Mary Le Bon, which is a church. It's a very pretty area. Um, we're coming into a lot of money. As you can see from the buildings behind me, lots of mansion blocks. And because we're near Harley Street here, there's lots of therapists, there's lots of um, philosophy schools, there's lots of meeting places, there's lots of, um, yeah, lots of AA meetings, social meetings, community meetings. Um, lots of lovely parks start to arise. So, I saw a video the other day from a, a creator who lives in Kentucky, sort of laughing about how another creator lived in an apartment in a European city. Now, in Europe and in the UK, people don't live in the center of town. Look at this place, okay? This is a Victorian city. And so people don't live in the center of town. It's a huge concentration here. One of these flats would cost five, six, seven times an entire home in Kentucky would cost. This area where I just got to is probably the first part of London outside the center where there will be a home. There will be a flat up there or there will be something that someone owns around, but not before this. To live in Covent Garden, I mean, these, these buildings, a flat would cost you millions here in Marylebone. This is one of my favorite streets in London. Now, it's one that people don't normally know. It's a very, very old street. It's, it's a hidden gem, and it still has massive amounts of independent shops, but bear in mind, it's a very, very rich area. So you can't afford most of what is being sold here, but it's so pretty, so, if you imagine London, uh, North London, Camden, Regent's Park, um, and then south of that, we're hitting Marylebone, which is kind of, and then you get Oxford Street, then you get Soho, then you get Covent Garden, then you get Waterloo, and then you start bearing out of London, so more of the suburbs. But the buildings get very, very pretty here. You've got lots of churches, you've got lots and lots of hairdressers. <laughs> Um, lots of cookery schools. It's, it's the place where people go and say, ah, I feel like I'm in London now. It feels older, it feels oldie worldy. The, um, the people, the pubs, the way that the buildings are designed, the fact that we're edging towards parks. And of course, parks are hugely important for the Victorian era. People would promenade. And so this street leads directly onto Regent's Park which has the most incredible theatre in it. Um, I haven't got time to show you today, my battery's going. But the Regent's Park Open Air Theatre I worked at many, many years ago, it's stunning. So each play, each Shakespearean play, I don't know if you knew this, as they were often, often performed outside, the first half and the second half of a Shakespearean play are designed for the light to go down. So they go with the light. The first half of the play is normally much lighter than the second half and after the interval it goes very very dark and that's to reflect what's happening, what the audience are seeing. And so when you see Shakespeare in the open air live in an arena, an amphitheatre, it's incredible because all the fairy lights come up and you see probably one of the most realistic and historically realistic ways of seeing a play, of seeing Shakespeare. If you're ever, ever in London, please go to the Regent's Park Open Air Theatre. Um, and there's grounds and it's all fairy lit. And then you have a picnic before you go in. And um, there's always two, two plays and a musical on per year. And it goes right the way from May through to September, I think, a bit like the Globe. Um, but the Globe is more of a um, Elizabethan style theatre. Um, I'd say the Regent's Park is much more it's, it, it's more open. You're sitting on grass banks, basically. And that's right at the end of this street here. So you can start to feel the class, feel the fact that people would have been able to afford going to the theatre. And people would have really, really embraced Shakespeare. And they always have in London. It's, it's again, part of our culture, part of our written history, and is always respected. We just park open air, 
as well as any other theatre that um, produces Shakespeare, is always full. Um, and Shakespeare is often taught in schools really badly. Uh, not so much anymore, but it's, um, it's always taught and kids are bored of it and don't get it because of its, you know, iambic pentameter and it's a different way of writing, but actually Shakespeare is the same as any other life. It's about family, sex, death, money and class and ruling and royalty and all the things that life is about now, basically. Illness, poisoning, hate, arguing, love, sex, drugs, rock and roll, all of these things. And um, so as you go around London, this part of it, you really start to have a sense that people have more money here and they would have had more money. And I used to live way, way over the other side um, it, when I was at drama school in a mansion block and it cost us, I don't know, 90 quid a week or something like that, all three of us together. And now that flat would be hundreds of thousands of pounds. So very typical buildings of the area behind me. Um, demographic of people starts to change. There's lots of old money. Here. Lots of older people still live here. So as I said, the first kind of place where people will be living all mansion blocks, all um, Victorian, and it's just a beautiful place to be. Um, and it's a place that many tourists wouldn't know about. It's a small street, cafes. Um, you can see uh, the centre of town behind me, a big building, and that, so that goes into Tottenham Court Road, back into a completely different area. This area is very quiet, it's very, it's, it's buzzy, but with, with old money. People still have baskets here that they do their shopping with. Um, and I just love it. And there's a beautiful church at the end, does lots of community work, has its own therapy centre. And also Marrowbone is home to one of the most the prettiest train station in London. Again, um, Victorian, I think and it still has all the steel awning and still has all of that design element to it and um by the way also there's lots of um plastic surgeons down here as well so everyone looks really good <laughs>